Hey guys, in this video I wanted to show you what uh, my gain settings were. I've had a few people ask me about what gains I use to fly my quads. And uh, this is the best setup that I have. So I, can't, I couldn't remember the numbers, so what I'm going to do is just plug it in. And I'm going to show you guys the way my NASA assistant set up. So you can use the exact gains I use. Now most of the time I do fly in, in uh, altitude hold or GPS, but when I do fly manual I lower the gains. Um, I have them hooked up to a VR knob on my 8FG, so they are lowered. The center of the knob is where I fly in altitude and GPS mode, so I know where my gains are and where, where, where I have them default would be in the center. So what I'm going to do now is plug in the quad. And I'll always remember, guys, you'd never want to have props on. Um, this is only a 3S battery. This is set up for 4S, so it's really not going to do anything. I'm making sure all my fail safes and everything off. My radio is turned on. I just turned that on first. And I already plugged the NASA cable in. Okay. So, now we have the quad plugged in and we're gonna plug it into the computer. And now I'm gonna power up this is uh, the NASA, this is the second version NASA, the new one. So we got to use the newest version here. The V2. I'll skip the intro there. Okay. There is a new firmware upgrade I got to do, so we're going to do that, but not right now. So this is what I wanted to show you guys. Uh, pretty much my gains. Okay, for some reason it didn't link up. This this isn't none of this stuff is working. So what I'm gonna do is because it didn't link up, we're gonna close this out and I'm gonna try it again. Now this light blinking red is because of low voltage. It should be holding green if it's plugged in right to the NASA. So I'll try that again with a different cable. And the light on the quad, you can see it's blinking red because it's a little better. That should turn green if it registers. Okay. Now the light on the BEC is green, which you guys can't see, but it is. So now it should say, when I go into the NASA, the assistant software, there are my gains. And I'll zoom in here so you guys can see them. Same announcement. The most important thing with this assistant software, guys, is to make sure that the controller output is off. That way, you know you're linked up. You can see how I'm moving the the radio stick here, and uh, it's 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 hooked up. You can see that the blue lights blink in there, green lights on, and you can see my flight mode, and that changes as I change my flight mode switch so uh, it's very important that this is off guys that way it's not going to fire up and that's why it's important that you don't have props on when you're doing this so now my default settings which okay my x1 is my left vr knob so i have them set up to x1 vertical i have inhibited and as far as uh the attitude i have it set at 135 and i'll zoom in here so you guys can see these are my basic uh, defaults for flying in altitude hold mode and GPS mode. Now what I'll do is I'm going to lower them. And this is pretty much what I fly in. Uh, I got the, the knob about 30% down. This is what I fly in in manual mode. Uh, I use these a lot. It's a lot you know, more forgiving um, that way. If the gains are up too high in manual mode, you're, it's going to be really hard for you to control. And when it goes back to the center, then my gains are at 146 for pitch and roll. Yaw is at 136 and vertical is at 120. Which vertical doesn't change with the X1. As you can see, I have that inhibited there. Um, my gimbal switch is off. I do have a Tero gimbal, which it plugs directly into my receiver from the control board. Uh, it is the CTR, it is only the T-pin that I use, and it goes into the 
signal pin of my receiver channel that I use for the tilt. Um, I don't use NASA. The, the, that's a tarot gimbal. It has its own brushless uh, control board in it. So that's on my intelligent orientation control. I have that enabled. I don't ever use it though, to be honest with you guys. Very rarely do I use it. Um, Failsafe is hooked up. And I can go through and show you guys here my other settings. I have it mounted uh, 600 meters in the back. See, it's giving me my voltage low warning because I have a 3S on it. I do use the uh, I do use the voltage, which I would highly recommend, guys, um, for protection. This camera fixed. Uh, I have recommended Intelligent for motor idle speed. Let's see your tools. That's all good. Upgrade I gotta do. I do have the latest version, I guess. And here's my fail safe. I have it on go home and landing. Intelligent orientation controls hooked up to switch E, I believe. Gimbal's off because I'm using a Tiro gimbal. It's got its own controller and my voltage is set for a 4S. Also, guys, when you guys put in the current voltage, use a uh, use a battery or a voltage meter to find the current voltage. Charge the battery, uh, whatever you're going to use, either a 3S or a 4S. Uh, put in the actual voltage from a voltage meter. Don't trust your OSD to give you the voltage or anything like that. Uh, look for a voltage meter, calibrate it doing that, and it's going to be the most accurate way for these for these numbers to be accurate when you're flying, okay? When, when your warning lights come on, it's going to be the best way to do it. So, back to the main screen here. This is just the view screen at the top. Um, this is my setup for my NASA V2. And this is on a 650 quad that I fly most of my stuff with here. Carbon fiber 11 inch props. I'm running, uh, I think they're 2810 motors or uh, 750 kV motors. Here's my Tiro gimbal. This is another uh, FPV night vision cam here. I have a video switch hooked up to it. And I'm using a 5.8 gear. On the radio here, this is a, I have a chain link system on it, but I use that for my plane, so I don't use it for the quad fly and I have a chain link system and I fly 1.2 with my plane so I can go long distance. So that that's actually unplugged right now and uh, I haven't set up for a quad just yet, but that's about it guys. If you guys have any questions um, how I do this or you know if, if you're having problems with the NAS or anything, please let me know. Don't be afraid to write and I'll get right back to you. Thanks for watching guys.